Hi, Stuart Bruce here, and I am the Spare Time Property Investor. In these podcasts, I'm going to share tips, tricks, and lessons that I've learned and will hopefully help you, especially if you're still working the nine to five. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Spare Time Property Investor podcast. Today is an interview episode. I interviewed Laura Davidson, a really experienced business person and property investor. Um, she's got really good knowledge, and she also has a staging business as well, home staging and virtual staging, which she talks about a little bit. But before we get into that, I just need to let you know that the latest issue of our free newsletter is available on our website. Um, it's a newsletter that gets posted out um, in our kind of local area. Um, but a free version is available on our website. Um, so it's linked in my bio under free newsletter. Um, so head over, um, check it out, and hopefully um, you'll enjoy it or get something from it. If you want to make sure you get the next issue, just uh, sign up to the mailing list um, and I'll make sure I get that sent out. But without wanting to waste any more time, let's get into the interview with Laura Davison. Thanks again, Laura, for coming on to the podcast. And first off, it would be great to hear about how you balance property around your busy life. Okay, well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be on here. Um, so I guess advice for just spinning a few different plates, I guess. Um, give you a bit of background, I guess, as well. Um, yeah. So I co-run a business, a print business with my brother, um, which is sort of what I do full time. So Monday to Friday, you can sort of see me in the print business. Um, that takes all day. So I just sort of fit property in around the edges. So um, I sort of have a bit of a routine now. I've just got in that's working quite well. So I do the sort of morning routine, get up a bit earlier and it gives me then a couple of hours before I even start work to actually cram in a bit of property stuff. And then also outside of that, I've got my weekends and evenings, which I do property as well. Um, But alongside that, I guess, I've got a few little things I do just to try and keep me on track. so like a few people, I use the passion planner, um, which I can't live without now. I've had it for a few years, but it's great on a morning. I can just get it out. Um, it's got half an hour slots throughout the day. So I can use that alongside an app called Endtask that I use. And um, it's just okay. a simple task. Um, and I can sort of just put anything that's in my head onto this task list. And then each morning I pick out the important things that I need to do and sort of plan my day around what I need to get done. Um, and it just sort of clears my head for the day and sort of gives me, you know, where I need to go. And what was that called? Um, so with Endtask, it's just okay. a, an app I found for the iPhone. Okay, it's I've not heard it's of just it. one of the ones I like. I've tried some other ones, but it's it's quite good. It's got priorities and different statuses. Yeah. So I can sort of manage it quite well on there. Um, and then I use the uh, the Pompadoura technique as well. So I've got a little tomato timer that I use, and I sort of time block and. So I've used those 25 minutes and give myself certain tasks to get through and just try not to distract myself in those 25 minutes. And then I get a five minute break at the end. Okay. So it just really helps me sort of focus in on what I need to get done. Finding that really helpful as well at the minute. Um, I think, feel like if I give myself, you know, no time limit on something, I can take all day to do something which actually could get done in half an hour. So if I can sort of restrict myself in any shape or form, that's the best way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Everyone's the same. Yeah, it's it's crazy, isn't it? Like a task that could take 10 minutes might take eight eight hours yeah. if I ain't got this little tomato timer. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the big one for me is outsourcing. Um, so I used um, a company to get a VA on board and did that about a year ago now. Um, and she's been really helpful. So she does a lot of the property searches for me. So the things that, you know, you'd normally spend time on, I'm sort of trying to find things that I can pass over to her that a sort of just admin tasks that are just taking my time up when my time's best spent on other things. Um, so over the years now, I've got to sort of doing like property tasks, admin tasks, any sort of research stuff that I need her to do. Um, and she just sort of finds it straight to my inbox and, and things like that. So um, rather than sort of digging through right move for an hour myself, I just get the properties that match my criteria just dropping straight across to me and I can sort of then pick up the phone and create some viewings that sort of sense checking them myself but it, it does save a lot of time um, and also with bookkeeping I outsource that I've got someone who I just send my invoice over to and they gather all the information up and, and sort that out um, and then I've got a leaflet um, distributor as well so someone that I can just send leaflets to each month for like direct to vendor marketing um, he just, I get, deliver them straight to his house and he just um, goes to the areas that I've targeted as 
having a leaflet dropped onto and he just goes around the streets each month and, and drops them out for me again so it's just saving some of my time so really it's just finding what I need to do where my time's best spent and focusing on that and then trying to get help in other areas to sort of outsource those tasks okay that's great and also you have another business so you don't just have the print um side of it you have a staging business as well as the uh, property investment so you're extremely busy but I think super busy listening, yeah <laughs> but I think from listening to how organized you've got all that um you know in terms of outsourcing certain tasks and um, being very organised in terms of how you chunk up your time and make sure you don't waste a, a second by the sounds of it. <laughs> how you, you, I've not got a second to lose here. <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely. So going back to, um, so you have those businesses. So obviously the print, is that basically like a, a nine to five sort of job or is it bigger than that or? Um, it's, it's a nine to five really. Um, it's, it is another job. It is a job, really. You know, I have to be there. It, yeah. it doesn't run without us yet. Um, so it is a case of being on site. And more than that, it's quite seasonal as well. So, you oh, know, okay. I'm in the office, you know, nine to five, but Christmas is just around the corner and that's when it gets, you know, manic busy. And oh, then you uh, could be yeah. working all evenings in early in the morning. Um, so it, it does take a chunk mm. of the time off. And at the moment, I am looking at systemizing that more to try and I suppose I suppose one of the real strengths of you having people to outsource tasks to you I don't suppose you will have as much of a dip if you didn't have those people so the property side of it can continue and they can carry on looking for properties you can still distribute your leaflets and everything like that while you're mad busy doing the uh, kind of <laughs> Christmas rush and everything well, we're churning out the prints all <coughs> Christmas no absolutely yeah, yeah that's that's the idea of it. I've been working on it sort of this last year, just trying to get it so it doesn't involve me as much and, you know, trying to make it a bit more passive. Like like you said, in Christmas, it's not going to falter because, you know, I've got my weekends free. So if houses do come on or that my VA finds, then I've got my weekends still to go and have a look at them. But the searches aren't stopping. We're still actively looking for those properties and we're still dropping those leaflets. So, you know, it's, it's still ongoing in the background. Cool. Okay. So I'm, I'm interested because I, I've been, I've been putting off getting a VA for a little while. I know I need one. Oh, go on. and, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm, I'm really, I'm quite tight. So one of the things that really kind of uh, makes me think twice when I look at VAs and stuff like that is the uh, cost. So when you, when you initially decided to get a VA, what was your kind of uh, thought process around, you know, balancing the amount, the amount you were going to spend on that person doing those jobs and the benefit you were going to get from them doing and doing those tasks? I think it, it just spoke for itself, really. I don't think there was much I needed to be swayed in respect to, you know, it, it, it was just time for me. I valued my time more than, you know that little bit of outgoings that it's going to cost to do it you know that there's only so much work I can do in a day before you know it affects me negatively in regards to you know if I'm too tired and you know your work is going to go downhill in that respect because you're not going to be as focused on it so actually if I can outsource that task but I get a bit more free time even if it's just to you know get my head down and just relax or do some exercise that's going to benefit me more than just work myself to the ground and you know the, the VAs you know that they're, they're not that expensive with the yeah. work that they do and you don't have to get them like I got them from um, Freedom Geeks I went through them to get my VA and I know some of the other ones they made you sort of sign to sort of say like a minimum hours but this you could just pick and choose a couple of hours as long as that's what your VA wanted to do if they just needed a couple of hours a day they were quite flexible with that so I could just pick up a little bit and then as my work grew then obviously the job could grow as well. So it wasn't like a big outgoing at the beginning. It can grow organically as, as I'm growing as well. That's great. That's a great answer. I need some rest. So that's a justification. <laughs> it's honestly, it's so worth it. Um, no, at the time I, I, was, I do. I, yeah, I know. I know. About you. <laughs> You're a bit apprehensive when you first doing it because you think, it's, it's not even just the cost because it's the initial um, that's time well. you need to put to one side to actually systemize all your processes. And that was a scary part for me, thinking I need to take everything that's in my head and put it onto a piece of paper. 
and show her how to do it and make sure she's doing it in the right way. And that's the time bit at front. But once you've done it, you get that time back in so many other ways later on, but you just need to, you need to just jump into it and do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's one of those things it's one of those things that it kind of is it's on my list but it kind of just gets pushed and pushed, and pushed. Down, yeah. <laughs> i'm really um i'm really interested as well because you said about your direct to vendor um strategy so you've got leaflets going out and i know i speak to a lot of people who are doing leaflet campaigns we have a newsletter that goes out to our kind of um, local area and stuff like that as well um and i know people really struggle um, if they've had a period of time um, where they've been sending out leaflets and they're getting nothing back. So how long did it take you to get your first kind of response back from um, the, the leaflet and campaigns you've been doing? Okay. So actually, I think people say the more times you hit it, like it, it's sort of, you know, people, once they've seen it maybe five or six times, it's fun, they're sort of like, oh yeah, okay, I've seen this a few times, mm. maybe I should have a look at it now. But actually it didn't work for me that way. The interest was right at the beginning. So the, the one I've just completed on at the moment was direct to Fender through his leaflets. And she actually contacted me. It was either the first or the second batch I'd sent out. So it was very early doors. Um, so sometimes I think it's just situation dependent. I don't think it necessarily means everyone's, you know, it depends where they are and who they're actually targeting. Some yeah. people might take a little while to do it, but some people might just be wanting to get rid of it. And it just drops on who who you've got and who you've put that letter through and what their situation is. Absolutely. And I suppose um, whether it's the first or the third or fifth time, if that person is in need of getting rid of that house, they're going to call you and they're going to yeah. have that conversation with you. And from there you can, well, do it or, or, you know, pass it on to somebody else or whatever. So yeah, that's great. Yeah, exactly. But if there's a conversation to be had, I mean, it, it's not to say that it's going to go anywhere because you might want different things and, you, you know, you've got to make a scenario that works for both parties, but it opens doors and conversations. So it, it's worth, worth doing for, for the price of a few leaflets. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's just, it's just one of those things that I, I speak to people about sometimes. And just, yeah, it is, it's just one of those um, things that just needs um, some perseverance and, you know, continue with Yeah, because I think people do it. Works. Just, Sorry. Yeah, they, they stop, don't they, sometimes. They'll do it twice and think, oh, it's not working. But actually, it does take longer in some cases. So you can't be disheartened after the first couple because, you know, like I said, people do say you need to see it a few times before, before you get any interaction. So you just need to keep at it and just make sure you keep the consistency there. Great. Cool. I'm really interested as well, because you're, you're, um, you have the print business, you obviously do your property um, investments as well. Um, but you also have the, the staging company. So what was, what kind of uh, made you think actually, I really want to do a staging company, as well as all this other stuff, it must have been a real passion for yourself, uh, for you or or something? Yeah, well, it's really strange. I think if you just spoke to me a few years ago, this would never have been in the pipeline I didn't even know what it was before oh. I got into property um obviously the work environment that I'm in is obviously quite a creative place you know deal with yeah. artwork and, and things like that <clears throat> on a day-to-day -day basis and then as I went into property um you know this I, I just found a passion I guess for for taking these really run down houses and just transforming them into something really beautiful and you know making it a really nice place for tenants to live or for new home owners to buy a house and just to make it it look really nice and you know considered as well it needs to be more than just a pretty place it needs to work well as well as a space mm. um and it's just been really organic really I just to be honest I was just having fun with the projects I was doing and I just really enjoyed getting stuck in and just having a bit of input into the design and then staging afterwards and you know finishing off the design with the staging um, and over time people just sort of asked who did it and you know could I help them with theirs and I just thought at that point actually it could be a viable business um, and it's something I've been really enjoying so I just thought I'd just take a leap of faith and just have a go at it really so it is obviously only a startup and you know it's just been a lockdown that I've decided to go ahead and do it um, but I'm excited to see where it goes now. Absolutely. And I've spoken to other people as well. I think I said in the email uh, and that um, have said how how beneficial it is when you're doing the staging um, side of things, because you're meeting all sorts of different people. You're getting connections. You get you're networking as well as uh, being able to go and you know have a business. Um, and yeah, they've they've seen it um, as a real benefit to their property business. So uh, have you found that so far in terms of the people you're meeting and the next networks you're creating? Yeah, because you find that you, when you're sort of doing property, you sort of stick with your area, don't you, as well? Mm -hmm. Like I invest quite locally, so um, 
I, I do have a group of people that we network with and we go have curry nights and, and things like that. So, you know, I'm, I'm seeing people in the network, but this sort of thing takes you further out than your, you know, than the area that you work to. So like the home staging, for example, I sort of work within like 120 miles of where I live. Um, and obviously that branches now into so many different areas and you just finding yourself speaking to other people who speak to other people mm. and you just, you know, your connections just then spread quite significantly. So it does open quite a few doors with new people, which is quite an interesting, interesting thing. Yeah, and I think it's a really nice, com uh, it's a really nice complementary part of um, the business, really, because you you have that and the property side of it. Um, and it just makes so much sense. It makes so much sense yeah. to have that as a, an addition. Absolutely. Um, and like with the virtual stage, and that's really good as well, especially with COVID as well at the moment, because that doesn't need anyone to be on site. So it is just taking someone's image and sort of digitally enhancing it by putting these digital furniture and, you know, accessories in that, that do look realistic. So you still get a really realistic looking picture at the end, but that's nationwide. So then your contacts then could go as far as like throughout the UK, which is, which is great because you never know where you're going to end up when you're doing property. You know, you start locally, you don't know what's, yeah. what's down the road. So it's great to have all these kind of connections across the UK. That's great. So, Obviously, um, the virtual station is one of the things you've been you're pushing due to Corona. But have you had any um, property deals that have been progressing through, you know, this kind of this lockdown and the previous lockdown? Sorry, say that. Do you mean um, the actual stage or actual property deal? Sorry. No, no. So the, the virtual the virtual staging is obviously how you've yeah. adapted the staging business. But have you been um, progressing any property deals um, during the uh, pandemic? Yeah, so... Um... A couple. So pandemic-wise, that's actually a really interesting thing. So when the first one came in, I was just finishing a property. So I was really lucky timing-wise. So the weekend before the first lockdown, I got my tenants in. Oh, wow. And I just had the valuer in that week before they stopped them. And then no one could get mortgages for a little while. Where because mine had had the guy out to site that week. And then I could carry on, so I got a refinance. Thankfully, that's great. That is great. <laughs> so I'm on the lucky side with that. Um, so the first lockdown didn't thankfully affect me, and I'd just had some offers accepted as well. So whilst they did take longer to process, I've got them through now, um, and I've had a flip that I was working on, um, which I guess the second lockdown has maybe potentially going to affect it because it's just gone on the market. We've just gone into okay. a second lockdown. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, you know, it, I can't say how that's going to go as yet. Um, it does work as a buy to let. So worst case, I can just rent it out. Ideally, I want to sell it, but it's early days and the property market hasn't shut down like it did last mm -hmm. time. So I'm hopeful <laughs> that, you know, it might take a bit longer, but I'm hoping just to, it'll go through as normal. I've done it to a really good standard and I've staged out really nice. So it's had a lot of positive feedback. So we've just got to see where that one goes now. That's great. Yeah. Um, very, very, very fortunate with the, you know, getting everything sorted just before the first yeah. lockdown. That's brilliant. Oh, it was, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it because I was speaking to some people and they would just get in there as done the way they've stopped it. It, oh, well, actually it didn't, because I did have a property I was getting, but it's not going through anymore, but they pulled the lending, so I was getting a bridge at the time through together, and they stopped, um, although I'd have to submit the application, they were like, we're not going to take any more on, so then I was trying to find someone else to take it on, but with COVID, it just didn't stack as well, and I just wasn't as comfortable with it, so, um, and we were always having a bit of a stalemate with some lenders issues as well, so... <laughs> It was, a, it was a no go in the end. So that was the only one it affected, where the other ones we got through absolutely fine. Um, and I completed on a, the, the direct to vendor one it last week, I think. And um, so I just got the keys to that, which is just a little buy to let. So I just need to get the builders in now. So that's the, the next project that I'm working on. Great. Sounds really good. So what, um, what originally sparked your interest in property investment? Um, so. I don't know, to be honest. <laughs> um, so I did business at college and university. And then I went into the family company when I was at uni. So I did that part time. So on a weekend, I'd go home and do stuff for the family business and just work there Saturday, Sunday um, before leaving and getting a job in project management for a few years. And then after that, I went um, into the family business 50-50 with my brother. Okay. So I've mm -hmm. always had that kind of, you know, her business focus I guess like it was sort of always sort of naturally guided back into you know sort of wanting to do like business and have my own businesses um 
and I'd sort of had this idea that I wanted to get into property um, and I wasn't really sure how to do it to be honest I didn't really have the knowledge or the understanding of it um, so it was actually a training course that okay. initially started I did do a training course um, and it just opened my eyes to all these possibilities and because I'd had this you know background of business I hadn't I'd not really seen property as a business before, but then when I went to this training, I could understand how it was a viable business, how we could make something more than, you know, they're just having a couple of buy to lets. I was, you know, 17 cash from his pension pot. I could see how I could actually grow it and use it more like cash flow along the way and have that extra layer of an income stream. Um, and it basically it just all went from there, really. It was just this initial spark and, you know, opening my eyes to all these possibilities. And I just thought, this is this is it. This is what I want to get into. And it's, it's just gone from there, really. Okay, that's brilliant. So a lot of people have, um, I mean, a lot of people love training courses and other people um, have very mixed views about training courses. But... <laughs> I'm being I'm being polite yeah they do <laughs> <laughs> so you obviously really benefited from it um so I mean did it go into a lot of detail or did it just open your eyes to what was the possible what was possible then did you go off and like read up about it or was that training course kind of uh, enough for you to kind of take what was um covered in that course to just crack on and, and get going um so I certainly think it had a really big impact. I certainly don't think I'd be where I am today if I hadn't done it. Um, I think, if anything, the network that you get with it, um, the people you meet along the way, is the most beneficial thing. Um, because you meet people that are out there and doing it. And, I, and like looking back now, I know you can get, you know, these books and things on the internet for free. And that, you know, they're readily available. And you've got the networking events as well. But I don't know the network that you got with there alongside the training. It was just that initial education that, that I got. For me, it was a big learning curve. Like I didn't had know any of this before. And I don't think I would have felt confident enough to go and do it without sort of taking that time to sort of slowly build on, on the knowledge. And, you know, rather than, I just don't think I would be where I am now if I hadn't yeah. done it. It just gave me such a confidence boost and thinking that I can do it. And I met the people who've been there and done it to really show that it was a viable business and that it can be done. Yeah, absolutely. And I can see I can see a real benefit to it. And especially you got going and it's probably shaved off years in terms of where you are now, um, yeah. where you'd have you, you, you it, how long it would take you to get there without the training course by the sounds of it. So yeah, absolutely. And like I said before, I, I just didn't know about it. I didn't understand how it would work as a business. So if it had been left to me without that training, I could have maybe just picked up one or two and just cashed it in as like my pension later on down the line and, and done it the completely like the backwards way of doing it. And, you know, I just would never have known. And, I, and I'm, I'm grateful I came across it and I know people don't like it um, or have mixed reviews on it. And, you know, it's each their own. I think people yeah. are doing things that suits them. And I think for me, it worked and I don't think I'd change it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's great. And I think it's good to have, um, I think it's good, it's good to hear the different kind of uh, perspectives on this, because sometimes I think a lot of people um, get annoyed about, um, you know, how much um, some of the training courses charge. And then other people say it's like the best thing ever. So it's, it's great to hear, you know, kind of different um, kind of opinions and, you know, real life um, kind of experiences of what what happens after some of these train, training courses in terms yeah. of the success. And I think with the price as well, um, you've got to kind of look at it like you it is an investment into yourself yeah. as well. And I can understand that if you're paying it and you're not doing anything, it's a waste of everyone's money. But if you're going to do it and you're going to do it right and you're going to stick with it and you're going to get that money back, then, you know, I think it's worth every penny. Absolutely. Cool. Okay. So what's the, um, so far then, what's the favorite deal you've done? Favorite property deal? Um, so this is my first deal. Um, so I went, do it back to front again. Okay. <laughs> I went straight in with a HMO, uh -huh. um, which is not what I'm advising anyone to do who is just starting out, by the way. <laughs> um, I at the time had a coach who um, had built a portfolio of HMOs and um, the area that I invested in, the builder I used was also an investor. And he'd, he basically just refurbed HMOs all day long. So he was really knowledgeable. And I had a team that basically just knew it inside out. So when there was any sort of doubts or questions or issues that came up, I had a really good team to work mm -hmm. and talk to and to really understand the, the process. Um, but the reason that I like it so much is, um, so my builder said that, 
he could do the design, the sort of finish and get the furniture in for X and out. And I was like, no, 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 I'm going to, I want to have a little dabble at that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I went my way in and yeah, so I basically really enjoyed that because I just got stuck in with the design of it and I was really happy with how it fin was finished. It was my first time ever doing anything like that. Um, and I just really enjoyed it. And I think it just sparked that passion and, you know, it's led me down the road and now I've got into sort of staging, but that's sort of where it first started and where I first sort of, you know, had this passion for sort of changing these sort of rundown houses into sort of really lovely spaces. So, you know, I've come a long way since then, but it was, it's definitely my favourite one. No, it sounds great. It's, it's very, it's amazing going straight in with an HMO and everything as well. That's it. We, we did that, to be honest. We went straight in. With, with oh, it. good. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we went straight in. But, you know, I think it's, I think it's a, a real, a really brave thing to, to, um, to do. Especially as uh, often people say, you know, cut your teeth doing, doing buy-to-lets and everything like that. But sometimes you just got to go for it. <laughs> well, it just worked. And to be honest, I've spent so long just looking around and trying to find like deals that worked. And this one worked. And I was like, I'm just going to go for it. Got a good team. Uh, we knew what we were doing. Initially, we were going to do a four bed, but actually when we got in there, it had a really huge loft space and we thought, oh, it's a shame not to do like a loft conversion. So we ended up putting a fifth bedroom up there as oh, well. Wow. So that ended up being, it was a two bed terrace. We ended up having a five bed all on suite HMO by the end of it. Um, and it got snapped up within 24 hours of being let, fully let. So, and then those guys were in there for a year as well. So it's been a good little property to start with. That's really good. That's cool. Where, whereabouts do you invest out of interest? Yorkshire. Yorkshire. Okay, cool. Yeah. I should have known by the accent. <laughs> Stick to my roots. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay. I take the girl out of Yorkshire. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a few, I've had a few people from Yorkshire actually on this. It must be, it yeah. must be a good area for it. <laughs> cool. Okay. So um, have you got any um, top business or property books you go back to or you've found really inspirational? Um, so I really liked E Myth. Uh -huh. Have you read that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Really so I, well, I read it right at the beginning, and I didn't really take it in the first time. And then people kept going on about. It. I was like, I'm going to have to try this again. So I dug it back out, and then the second time, now I was sort of a bit more experienced with everything, had a more on my plate. Um, yeah, I just resonated with it much more the second time. Um, so I guess for people that don't or haven't heard of the e myth it's, it's about basically getting someone who's basically to work on your business rather than in it and like I mentioned before like the job I've got at the moment is a job I'm sort of working it doesn't work without me so it sort of goes through sort of systemizing and sort of being able to train to take you out of the business and like the cogs will turn without you mm. and you know how some people are sort of more focused on doing the day-to-day -day tasks and jobs that they get you know, the actual business itself gets pushed on side. So I've read that quite recently and I'm now just in the process of trying to systemize that stuff so we can try and, you know, I think it, not be it, 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 is, it's a, it is a great book. It is a really, really good book. And I remember, I remember reading it years ago and just thinking that's absolutely the way to, to go and, and do it. Um, for me, I, I just need to apply some of the lessons from it <laughs> at the moment. That's that's the that's the main thing. But it's it's a fantastic book. Uh, yeah, kind of, it you know, it talks about going from being like an, an operator to a manager, and you know, growing the business through the. Doesn't it talk about like from juvenile to teenage or something like that about the business? Yeah, and it's got like the three personality types as well. So like you said, the is it the entrepreneur, the manager, and the technician? I want to say. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is good. Like you said, it is applying it because you read and you think, oh, yeah, this sounds great. I'm going to do it all. And then like two weeks later, you're back to your day job and you've got about it. So that's what happened the first time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I've gone back a second time and thinking I should do it now. <laughs> I think, yeah, no, I think I think that needs to be dug out. But for anybody um, who, who is in property or business, really, I think that, that's a great book. And it, it makes you realise as well. I think sometimes when people um, have small businesses, um, and they create a day job for themselves. And this book really, really kind of goes into how they've created a day job for themselves rather than uh, a self-sustaining business that they, like you say, they can walk away from and it still continues to, um, you know, produce whatever it needs to produce. And yeah, no, it's, it's a really good book. And I think it's one of those books as well. I think other people, um, 
like the four hour work week, for instance, I think has taken massive influence from it. And, you know, because it's, it's quite old, isn't it? And um, yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's like 35 years old or something. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's, re- it's one of those real foundation kind of books that I think everyone should read, but then read it yeah, and then apply, it. apply what's in it as well. But I think that's, uh, that's one of the things with all these business books and um, you know, they have great ideas, but it is actually going and, and doing it, isn't it? It's like you were talking about the training course, you know, you have to go and do it. So. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you could read 50 books a year, but if you're only reading them and not doing it, then there's no much point, is there? Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Okay. Um, so you've already talked about um, Passion Planner and um, Endcast, but do you have any yeah. other tools or anything like that you use to help you or, you know, keep yourself organized and balance um, everything? Yeah. I mean, um, I talk, well, I think people always go to this with Tre- uh, Trello, sorry, is a really yeah. good one for me. Um, I get my VA to use that because I found this feature you can you can send cards from like web pages. So I find it really useful. So my VA sends a card from like right move with the property details in and that goes into then a certain card list on my um, Trello board. Oh. And then we're going to have all these different mm-hmm. statuses and we can just move like the properties along. Um, so I find that really useful. And I think it's free as well. So that's always been really good. Um, and then with my, um, my VA, I also use this thing called LastPass. Um, I don't know if you've heard of that. Yeah, um, it's, it's like a password sharing website. Um, so basically, there's certain things I'll need her to get into, but obviously I don't want to be handing out passwords left, right and centre. So um, basically, I can sort of give her my logging details, which she doesn't need to know any of the password details. And I find that quite handy. Um, so I can share share like logins with that. Yeah. I know you only asked for one, but I've got three. Oh, that's cool, yeah. <laughs> a box app. I just, I, I love this one. So I use this for all my work um, because they've got an app where you can have it on your desktop and it means that you can open documents and save them straight. Like it's just like opening a file like you would on your computer without having to like download anything and re-upload anything. It's just there ready to use and you can, my VA and me can just open them and what was that called? Sorry, you broke up a little bit. It's a Dropbox it? app. So Dropbox. you can download something to put on your desktop and it just means that you can just access stuff straight away without having to download anything. Yeah, no, it's great. I, I use um, Google Drive probably in a similar way. It's, uh, it's like, yeah, it sounds, sounds quite um, similar in terms of being able to share those documents and having it um, available wherever. So, yeah, that sounds really, <laughs> really good. So LastPass, yeah, that, that sounds like something we would use, actually, that LastPass. I'm going to have, have a dig and <laughs> see what that one's like. Yeah. I just use, I think I use a free level. I haven't, I don't think I pay for anything. I think they try and get you to pay for stuff. I'm pretty sure you can use a free one. There's so many, so many of these, they have free versions or they're free. It's, it's brilliant, really. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, it's Hootsuite. That's another good one as well. I love Hootsuite. Hootsuite. Which is um, like a social media planning. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody else said about this. And I think that's one of those things that people, um, including myself, it, I think when you get really really busy it's so easy to drop the social media because it you know it's one of those things that nobody's shouting at you to do the next post nobody's shouting at you to do you know a, a video or like face the earth on social yeah. media <laughs> yeah absolutely you can easily do it so yeah that's great okay um so what this is this is the penultimate question so we we discussed this a little bit before we we, we went live so what would your life look like? Well, what will it look like when you've achieved all your goals? Um, when I've achieved all my goals, I mean, for me, I got started initially in property. A part of it was, you know, any other income stream, because I think obviously that's quite important, um, and this security, because I've got another business, which, you know, is doing well at the moment. Um, you know, you never know where, what could happen. So I kind of wanted that layer of security. So, Initially, my goals were to get a layer of security with that kind of, you know, have something more passive in the background, um, but also more time freedom, um, you know, to be able to go and do things in the day without having to be, you know, stuck at my desk all day. I know that's where I am at the moment, but I'm hoping that's a short term thing to have long term gain. Um, so I'm hoping sort of in the future when my goals are achieved that, you know, I'm not sort of glued to a desk doing work. I've got businesses that are sort of ticking over without the need of me being actively involved in them day to day. Um, I'd love to do some volunteering um, and spend my time doing sort of giving back. Um, so I'd love to do some stuff 
uh, volunteering with animals and things. That's quite a big thing of mine. Yeah. Um, I've got horses of my own, so obviously I'll spend more time doing things like that and spending time with family. I think they're more the important things, anything material, to be honest. I think it's more that time with family and friends and being able to enjoy myself is ultimately where I'd like to get to and not be so, you know, restricted because work needs me. That sounds amazing. No, that sounds really good. I think as well, when I, um, I've speak to so many people and, um, you know, just not normally as a question, actually, but, you know, you just chat to people. And I've, I don't think I've ever heard anybody say, you know, I'm doing this so I can get a Lamborghini or I'm doing this so I can get a massive watch. I don't know what people, but, you know, <laughs> it's, it always seems to be, um, you know, about freedom and being able to um, control their lives and, and stuff like that. So yeah, that, that sounds great. What animals would you what what animals would you um volunteer to look after? So I've got this dream of having <laughs> I just want to do cat fostering is where I'm waiting to get to. Uh-huh. Um I'm the crazy lady with all the cats, so <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but three of my own. But yeah, no, I'd love to do something like that and just um yeah, helping if I can volunteer with some. Next year, I've got my goal is to try and do some volunteering with like a local rescue centre just to get my foot in the door. But I'd love to be able to sort of have a part of the goal, I guess, would be to have like a little cottage with a bit of land that I could have the ability to sort of take animals on board and and help out. So that's where I would get to. Yeah, we we see me in 10 years and 20 cats, that's why. (laughs) (laughs) We, yeah, I think I think that's one of our things actually. Uh, you know, being able to have somewhere where we can have lots of animals and stuff. That is one of our yeah. kind of aims. Who wouldn't want that? <laughs> oh no, oh no. <laughs> we there's a house near to us actually, and they've got um, it's quite. They've got, I suppose I suppose it's like a little small holding and stuff, like that, and they've got llamas and stuff. Like that I was thinking, yeah, yeah, it's quite cool. <laughs> you get your eye on it <laughs> yeah it's amazing yeah it's amazing but you just kind of, yeah you, you just you, yeah the ability to just have that space and you know have lots of animals and, and things like that yeah, definitely that's, that's one of ours yeah. as well so uh, it's, it's good it's good but I, I do I do I like it when because I think there's this impression of people in property like the Lamborghini the Ferrari you know flash uh, you know all that sort of business and um maybe some people are big into that but i, I don't suppose i've met any yet <laughs> i don't know i just I think it's, nice. it's gonna cost a fortune to run in there i know you, you could buy another house so <laughs> yeah <laughs> just get another house that's probably with a once you get the bug that's it <laughs> yeah cool okay so last question um if you could speak to your 18 year old self uh, what advice would you give them Okay, so I would, I go back and say to be more confident and have more self-belief. I can be my own worst enemy. I sometimes lack the belief that I can do things. So I would, you know, and it, it shot me in the foot a number of times because I've just not put myself out there enough. Mm. And it, it just goes back to just the confidence thing. So just go back and, and shake myself and just say that you can, you can do it. I go bloody do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, I think that's great yeah and um do you think you'd have listened uh i'm gonna say no but i would hope i would do if i could really <laughs> give myself a good shake <laughs> i think it's one of those things isn't it yeah you, you, i think i always i always think that when when i ask that question because um yeah that 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 whole conversation with you with your younger self it would be great to be able to do it but me personally, I know I wouldn't have listened, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's... I know, and I think you get to this. But I'm saying this now because I've gone through. Yeah. I think, in all honesty, it's the last couple of years doing this property and having to put myself out there a little bit more. That's, you know, given me more confidence, and I've, I've seen that's that change in that in that positive direction. Where if I hadn't have done it, I might be sort of stuck in my old ways and and not not have done that. So, you know, I can only sort of you know say it's going in the right direction anyway so I don't know if my 18 year old self would have listened either to be fair <laughs> but I'll tell you what it's, it's a great thing to um yeah uh, it's a great thing to say though because confidence and you know believing in yourself is such an important thing and um, sometimes yeah. sometimes that ability is is um given to the wrong people <laughs> when they're younger <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah and I think it can have such an impact on what you're doing like especially with stuff like this you do need to sort of have to put yourself out there and, yeah. and do these kind of things and you know you you have to have some some you know belief in yourself that you can can go and do it so you know 
it's got to be done, hasn't it? Absolutely. So with that then, so obviously you're, you're saying you've, you've gained that confidence uh, from, from doing things, but do you, um, do you kind of, have you read anything about mindset or works on the mindset side of things at all? Um, so I read, I read Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. Mm-hmm. I read that one and I kind of resonated with that quite a bit because that's quite a mindset thing with, you know, sort of tell yourself to go and do so that you can go and do it. And, you know, it, it, it really showed to me that I'd, I'd put these barriers in front of myself. And I think it was knowing that I was doing it was good enough to start thinking, okay, I need to, now I know how to start getting past it. And that, that was a bit of an eye opener for me. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said before, sometimes we're, we're our own worst enemy, aren't we? So yeah, that's yeah. great. That's great. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm still as anxious and stressful as, as the next person, but you know, <laughs> getting over it a bit. <laughs> I, suppose, I suppose the more success you have, you know, it will just grow and grow and yeah, you'll kind of. Yeah. I always think back and think, you know, when I first started in property I wished I had the problems I had now so and like the things I found scary when I first started don't bother me anymore and it is just a growth thing and the more I do it and the more problems I come across you know the less scary it becomes so it's just gotta you gotta keep at it haven't you absolutely yeah that's great well cool that is it then um thank, thank you for coming on um obviously it'd be great to you know kind of um keep in touch um but where where could anybody else find you where's the best place for people to find you on the internet um so i'm most active on instagram um so um my um name's where it's laura davison property is where you can find me on instagram and that's where I'm, I'm most active and you can find me so you can drop a message on there or you can go to my website which is laura davison property.co.uk um, which has got some of my service on there so if you need anything virtual staging or home staging you know you can get in touch on there and i can have it see if i can help so you, you get to the stage and stuff through your your property website i was just going to ask how they how people find you yeah stuff. so i've got the services outlined on there but you know if i want to drop a message on instagram or facebook you know i'm happy to have a chat on there as well but the information is on my website that's great so thank you so much for coming on and i'll see you again soon that's great thanks so much for having me so there you have it, the interview with Laura Davison. I'm sure you'll agree, a really, really knowledgeable person. Um, she's done lots already, and I'm sure she's going to achieve some massive things over the next few years, and I will check in with her again next year. So that's it from me this week. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you again next time. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast and I really hope you enjoyed it. If you have, please leave me a five-star review to help other people find it and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.